Hello everyone. I'm Andrew Albert. Today I'm going to talk to you about superiority of four level laser over three level laser. In nature, only one electron only interacts with one photon. That's how nature works. There are three basic interactions between photons and electrons. One first one is absorption in which a uh, electron absorbs a photon in X plane and photo, uh, electrons energy goes up and you lose a photon. You lose a photon means you lose a photon's energy and it's, that energy is absorbed by the electron. So there's a finite probability that this interaction will happen. So we can call that probability B, but it's actually probability of absorption per second per spectral radius, blah, blah. But I can ignore this bit because I'm saying um, this happens inside, because I'm only talking about happens inside a time frame. So in our small example, let's put this probability of absorption as half. And if I had two electrons and two photons, what will happen? one electron will absorb one photon and go up in energy level so how many photons do you have coming out you had two photons coming in you lost one photon so you are left with one photon next interaction is stimulated emission in which a photon and electron meet in the x-plane and this photon induces this electron to give out a photon, an extra photon and lose that energy and go down in go down in energy level. So it has the, the electron has lost a photon, given up a photon and lost energy and given gone gone down in energy level. So in this small example I will say BST, my probability of stimulated emission is half because it was Einstein who found out that probability of stimulated emission and probability of absorption are equal. So if we have, if, I, if, if my number of electrons is 2, number of photons are also 2, what will happen? So one of, one of my electrons will emit a photon and go down in energy level. So how many photons will do you have? You will have two and a plus extra one you have three now. So the, it's a very fundamental fact that probability of stimulated emission is equal to probability of absorption. Next one and the most weirdest of them all is the spontaneous emission in which a uh, electron which exists in time suddenly gives out a photon and goes down in energy level. But this probability is very very small because the probability of spontaneous emission is equal to a constant times the probability of absorption or probability of stimulated emission because those two are equal. But this is very close to zero. But it's not zero, but it's actually bigger than zero, but it's very, very close to zero. So there's a quite a small chance of this happening. In spontaneous emission and stimulated emission, the difference is the, in spontaneous emission, the radio, the phase is not preserved. But in stimulated emission, the the gained photon looks exactly like the incoming photons. It's like looks like an exact copy with exact frequency, uh, phase, and all other characteristics. The next one is non-radiative transition, in which a phonon is uh, emitted. A phonon is just lattice vibrations, i.e., sound. It is also quantized, but the thing is, you won't get any light out of this transition. 
there is also a finite probability that this interaction will also happen. So, the, what are the most important points? Okay. During absorption, photons are lost. If you are just thinking about photons. In stimulated emission, photons are gained. But for light amplification, you should gain more photons than losing. Obviously, I didn't have to tell you that. What will happen when we run absorption and emission together? As you can see, uh, so there are some excited, there are some electrons at the excited level, there are some electrons at the ground level. So these are being absorbed and going to a, these are absorbing photons and going to a high level. These are losing photons and going to a lower level. So to find out how many uh, photons you are left with after this process. It's just number of incoming photons minus absorbed photons plus emitted photons. But there's always a catch because in nature, materials that are found in nature, they only have what? There are more ground level electrons than higher excited level electrons so you cannot have light amplification so as you can see if absorbed photons are always higher than, higher than emitted photons so you cannot have light amplification so what you need is population inversion in that, what we mean by population inversion is that you artificially make Ne2, which is this excited level electrons, more in number than ground level electrons. You can do this by two methods. First one is three level laser. Okay, let's first start with three level energy three level laser three level laser has three energy levels in which e1 is the ground energy level and e2 and e1 are higher energy levels here you get uh, you have some particles at e1 electrons at e1 then you pump them up to e2 energy level but those particles don't stay there they just rapidly transition down to e3 emitting photons which means rapid non-radiative transition slow from that uh, from that e3 energy level uh, those electrons fall to e1 energy level emitting photons which is a this this transition is a slow radiative transition you can find the frequency of this photon by getting the difference between the between e3 and e1 energy levels okay now let's just apply some hypothetical numbers and see how this model works okay so we'll assume that uh, all the uh, in high energy levels there are the, no electrons and probability of absorption and uh, stimulated emission is half and okay now you have 20 electrons let's just assume 20 which is a quite a nice number so 20 electrons at e1 energy level then you are pu you pump up eight of them to e2 energy level from that e2 energy level all those eight go down to e3 so now e3 has eight energy eight electrons if you pumped 8 to a higher level, you are left with 12 electrons at the bottom. So you have 12 here. So you have 8 here and 12 here. If you have 8 electrons at the top, our probability of stimulated emission was half. So half of those 8 will get 
involved in stimulated emission so which is four if so one electron reacts with one photon so if you have four uh, electrons in getting involved in stimulated emission means it you will gain four photons and here are 12 electrons and six of those electrons from those 12 uh, will get involved in uh, absorption if four six electrons are getting involved in absorption six photons will be lost so you will be you will end up with which is 8 minus 6 plus 4 you will you will end up with 8 photons at the output so you have you sent in 10 you have 8 so that's not amplification so what if I pump 12 electrons so there was 20 I pumped up 12 I'm left with 8 at E1 energy level and the 12 goes to E2 then they just rapidly transition to E3 energy level from that E3 energy level our probability of stimulated emission was half so six of those electrons will get involved in stimulated emission so you will gain six electrons six photons because six electrons will get involved in stimulated emission so you have eight and four of those uh, four of those electrons will get involved in absorption so you will lose four photons due to this absorption so six electrons gained through stimulated emission four lost through absorption so you have 10 minus 4 plus 6 yeah 12 photons so you have um, amplified you sent in <coughs> 10 photons now you 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 have 12 photons but what's the cost of pumping you had to pump 12 which is more than half of the ground electrons which is which is not that practical because in a real laser the electrons at the ground level the number of electrons at the ground level is runs into trillions of, of trillions so pumping half of those trillions would require lots and lots of pumping energy so not very practical now what's the solution the solution is a four level laser in four level laser you have a extra energy level which is E4 which is also higher than E1 so so what's happening in E4 level that slow radiative energy will terminate at E4 from E4 you will get another uh, extra non-radiative transmission which emits four norms and this uh, this electron will fall down to the ground energy level using this extra path so uh, you pump a very rapid non-radiative transition emitting four norms then a slow slow radiative transition emitting photons which you can find its uh, frequency using the difference between E3 and E4 then you have another non-radiative transmission now let's put some hypothetical numbers and see what happens now let's pump only four electrons up to E3 E2 so you have 4 at E2, they all transition down to E3 using non-radiated transmission. So you have 4 at E3. So if you have 4, so what, what's our uh, probability of stimulated emission was half. So 
two of them will get involved in stimulated emission so you will gain two photons because one photon will one photon interacts with one electron so you have two electrons gained but because our assumption that all the energy levels above the ground energy level uh, do not have any natural naturally do not have any electrons in them that means e4 is empty so you do not have any electrons to be absorbed which will get involved in absorption so you will not lose any photon due to absorption so you are left with 10 minus 0 plus 2 12 so you only had to pump 4 to get 12 photons at the output but here you had to pump 12 electrons to get 12 electrons at the output so which is quite obvious fact now for you that four level laser is much more efficient at doing the same thing so so we only require a small amount of energy to get a laser ampl a light amplification so I, I think I have proved that four level laser is much more efficient than a three level laser okay thank you for enduring my presentation that's it thank you